so today, as a, I want to start my lecture from the, the very important building. And, uh, this is the Yogi Stadium. As a, uh, as the age of ten, I was born in 1954. As the age of ten, uh, my father brought me to that beautiful building. As a, as a before, as a visiting this building, my dream is, was to be a bit earlier because I love cats very much. <laughs> but as a, after that day, I decided to become architect. This is a very memorial day, and it still was a, was a building as, a, as admires me very much. And as a night, as a, as a year 1964, the Japan as a, was is a, a kind of uh, the, uh, economic expansion and, uh, and the people want to build bigger building, higher building by concrete. Before 1960s, the Tokyo was a very is a low silhouette town. And the, most of the buildings want to store the buildings, but for Olympic, people want to build the big concrete structures, including the train, and as uh, of the freeway on the on the city, and the bigger hotels. And as uh, and on that period, Kenzo Tange so because created this beautiful monument, and his idea is the to have the new structure system for the building. That he designed two concrete columns, and the, the roof of the building was suspended from the concrete columns. And the structure engineer is uh, the Tsuboi, Professor Tsuboi. Uh, he is a Kenzo uh, Tange's friend, also teaching at Tokyo University. And two professors of Tokyo University worked together to complete this beautiful building. And and also, the, I like the ideas to merge the building into the landscape. The, it is an outstanding the monument, but at the same time, the Kenzo Tange tried to integrate this building into the landscape. And, uh, and also, the interior is, is really amazing. The, uh, the structurally, the, uh, the, the roof was suspended from the, the, the two columns, but at, at the same time, the, he designed the beautiful uh, top light, and the light, natural light from the top light was washing the aluminum panels on the ceiling, and the reflect, and the, lift, uh, and, uh, the, and the pool is, uh, looks like the heaven. And I heard as one American swimmer, as, uh, he, he, uh, his, his, his comment on the pool is, is really like heaven. And uh, now, the, uh, and also I still remember as a, as a, as a gold medalist, the Donald Shalanda the, from Portland, Oregon, the, he won five gold medals. So in, the, in this swimming pool. So I did a project in Portland, Oregon, the Japanese, gar Japanese gardens, and the, my friend is, is, is a friend of Don Shalanders, and the, we are planning to meet together <laughs> this year, next year. And the, his, uh, his numbers, is, is, uh, uh, his, his car has a n numbers 9064 -5. That means five gold medals on 1964. <laughs> he was a hero of mine at that time. He's, he was at the age of 18, but he's, he, he was, his level of swimming is very different from other swimmer. And uh, anyways, uh, uh, after that, as, uh, I, my dream uh, was to become architect, but uh, that my journey was not easy. And um, 
this is the, the stadium we are designing. It's, all, it's almost done. As a, as a, as a official, uh, the completion of the building is at the end of this month. And uh, but now the the people uh, are just checking the details and, and also uh, preparing the furniture for the space. Uh, and uh, and a basic idea for th this stadium uh, is to create the harmony with the forest. 1964 Olympic, the, to create a monument, outstanding monument, was a goal of Kenzo Tangi Zidane. But in 2020, I, th I think, what sh should be the goal of the Olympic of 2020? The harmony and environment uh, should be the goal of the Olympic of 2020. And uh, I tried to use local material as possible as can. And in this case, I did use the, the wood the from 47 prefectures of Japan. And uh, we did use cedar from the forest. And the cedar is, is most popular wood in Japan, but from 47 prefectures, we can show the diversity of Japan. The south and north, the color is very different, and also Japan Sea side and Pacific Ocean side, the colors are so different. And the people thought, people, the people usually think Japan is a small country, one country, but actually, so we have a rich diversity. And I want to show that kind of diversity. And also, the people can, can find the which cedar is coming from the, which prefectures. The, as a checking by internet. And, uh, and also the south gate, this is south gate, as, a, as a we try to use the wood from the uh, devastated area by tsunami and the Kumamoto earthquake. And recently in Japan, we have the, a lot of disasters, uh, and uh, the, especially up north area, Tohoku area, was so damaged, and we are using the wood from up north area for the for the north gate, and south gate we are using the wood from Kumamoto. Kumamoto was destroyed by earthquake very much, and uh, also so we got a hint from uh, the, this building. This is a Horyuji Temple. It's a seventh century building. It's uh, it is it is called the oldest wooden building in the world, because it's a, as a, as a thousand four hundred years passed after the completion of the building. The secret of this building is, is the section of the building. The five-story eaves, five-story roof, protect the, the wood the beneath, and also the wooden the pieces uh, replaceable. It's very different from concrete building because concrete building to replace piece by piece is really difficult. But wooden building, those, if some parts are damaged, it's easily can replace. It's a very sustainable system, and we learned that system very much, and we ap applied that system to stadium. It's a, it's a five story eaves, the, the wood uh, protected and also replaceable very easily. And uh, for the, the ceiling, we also did, did use the Japanese wood. It's, it's, a, it's a composite structure as, um, as of wood and steel, and uh, it's a, structurally, it is a very challenging because it's a 60 meters cantilevers, and, uh, and, uh, and also the, we try to create the warm atmosphere by using wood. And the roof, for the roof, we are using photovoltaic panels, the transparent type photovoltaic panels. It's a new material. And, uh, and the natural ventilation is most important for this building because we don't want to have air conditioning, 
and instead we try to the, calculate the flow of wind uh, the, to to uh, the uh, the bring the perfect uh, the uh, uh, temperature for the, for the seat. But uh, unluckily, the marathon game, as you know, is uh, as the IOC decided to move marathon game to Sapporo, and uh, people in Tokyo are so disappointed here to hear that. And the recycled material for every part of the building. And, as a, as a, and this is my favorite space. This is, a, we call it the, uh, the globe of the sky. It raises the 30 meters and 100 feet. And the people can enjoy the, the view of Tokyo from this level. And also we design the, the creek, the, the, the rain water is used for the, this creek, and the circulation was, was by uh, the photovoltaic panels electric. This is under construction, and uh, the detail would be like that. The dimension of wood is also very important for us, because we did use the plank, so, so the width is uh, the three feet, and uh, the three inch, uh, four inches is the 10 centimeters. So because in Japan, and the 10 centimeters section is most popular size for wood. If you go to Japanese houses, the most of the columns, the beams, are made by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Because the intimate scale of, of those columns the, the, the create the warm atmosphere for the space. And, uh, the, and the size of the, the small houses is applied to the bigger building. It is very different from normal wooden building. Normal wooden buildings, the people are using the glue lamb, so that's such, such the dimension. But uh, the dimension of the, the big glue lamp is, uh, is, is very similar to the scale of concrete building. And instead, we try to minimize the size as a, as a, and then to create intimacy to the build, big building. It is a view from the sky. And the structure, uh, the roof, roof is a little bit as a curved, as a raised at top. And uh, it's a structural solution for this big cantilever. As a, as a, as a, uh, uh, arch is as a, as a, uh, the method of arch is used for the roof, and then the, the top part of the roof uh, is a little bit raised. It is not by design, it's a, it's a solution by the structure engineer, but uh, I like the softness of this curvature. And uh, between 1964 to 2020, uh, so, uh, that is uh, 56 years, but as uh, my journey it was not so uh, so uh, simple. As uh, I came to New York in 1985, and uh, I got ACC grant. So luckily, the uh, ACC supported as uh, so, uh, so my study in New York, and uh, and uh, I. I, as a, I met many architects and I met many other sub developers. As a, I tried to as a, uh, interview with Donald Trump, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I couldn't. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, as a, and uh, after coming back to Tokyo in 1986, the Tokyo's economy was so good. It's a, it a kind of booming era in Tokyo. The, and the first four years, I was so busy. But in 1991, the bubble economy was busted. And then the, every project in Tokyo were canceled. And I, then I decided to travel to countryside of Japan because I didn't know countryside of Japan at all. And, uh, and, 
and in 1990s, as a, I traveled to small villages, a small town, and I could do some small project in the countryside of Japan. But I was very lucky because I could become friends of some good craftsmen, and I could work with them, and I learned as a, from them. The craftsmanship in Japan, people are afraid is disappearing, but still, so we can find good craftsmen, especially in the countryside. And uh, I want to show some good example of my experience in 1990s. This is a, my first project to show you is Hiroshige Museum. And the Hiroshige is a as he is a ukiyo-e artist, 19th century, it is his masterpiece, and uh, the, the, his method is very unique. He didn't use perspective method. Instead, he did use super juxtaposition method to create three-dimensional space. And uh, the, this funny painting was by great artist Vincent van Gogh. And Vincent van Gogh really respected Hiroshige. And also the, this great architect, Frank Lloyd Wright, he respected Hiroshige very much. And he actually wrote, so without Hiroshige and the tension of Gakura, I couldn't achieve anything. So he was very much inspired by Hiroshige. And his way of uh, making rendering was very much inspired by Hiroshige's uh, water block, wood block, and it's a lobby house. And as, uh, as again, as, uh, he is, uh, designed a big roof, and uh, he designed the horizontal big roof, and uh, that method was very much inspired by Japanese uh, the old buildings. And also the integration of green and the building the, in the balcony, he uh, add the, the vegetation. So that method was applied to the Olympic Stadium, so, and the, the similar idea, similar philosophy. And my Hiroshige Museum, so we try to create the lines and the transparency, and as a void. Void that we cut in the building is to create continuity to the, the mountain. The, in Japan, the mountain was always the most important for the town and village because natural resources of the mountain and uh, as a, as a, was the basis of daily life. The material and energy because no electric company, no gas company, the only mountain people could get energy. And, uh, and also the fertilizer came from the mountain, and without the mountain, they couldn't survive. And then they built, always built shrine at the edge of mountain, you see. But in 20th century, the those shrine was totally abandoned and the people for, forgotten the importance of mountain and forest. And uh, in this the small village, also shrine was abandoned and the mountain was very bad condition. And I talked with the mayor of the town the, to cut the building like that, to connect mountain and town again. And then that is uh, the reason behind the void of the building. This is the void of the building which connect the village and mountain. And that this is a plan the, which connect the, the village and the shrine up. And uh, material wise, we did use the local material as possible as can. And the Japanese carpenters always said the best material of the building is from 
the mountain behind. Because climate is the same, humidity is the same, temperature is the same, and the four seasons, rhythm is the same, and it will fit the building. And uh, rice papers, we also worked with the local craftsmen, and the stone also came from the quarry of the village. And uh, I, 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 I could enjoy the collaboration with the local craftsmen. And the furniture as well. And in China, so we also, also, also tried to adapt the same method. So besides Great Wall, we designed the bamboo house. We didn't cut the topography, and uh, the building was following the landscape, following the topography. And the uh, materials, we did use bamboo from the place. And also the, 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 the system of the planning is similar to Hiroshige Museum. Sue so projects the position of layers to create depths by the screens. This is a, is a tea, round, tea house, small tea house. And in Europe, we also uh, try to show the, the craftsmanship of Japan. And uh, the, in this small pavilion, we did use the, the special technique of the carpenters from Hida Takayama. And Hida Takayama is, uh, has a long history of wooden works, and, uh, and uh, this method is called chidori joint, chidori joinery, and this is a, it's a very sophisticated system. Without nail and without any metal, they can fix those joint. And uh, so we worked with the, the student of my school, and they also can learn how to use wood. Uh, so we, uh, so our students so often uh, so create a uh, so small pavilion with new material and the uh, so, and new and old the uh, method and the craftsmanship. And uh, after coming back from Milan, so we applied that system to the bigger building. So we tested the, the strengths of this joint system, and we applied the system to 10 meters high building. So you cannot f the, the find the any column and beam, because these small sticks are supporting the building. The dimension of the small sticks is a six, uh, two inches by two inches, but it's the, but the, the joint, generally, as the, as the, of the small sticks, the, uh, is very rigid and then they can support the building. And for the bigger structure, we also use wood. The, in this small village, Yosuhara village, it is very far from this, this Tokyo. From the airport, so, uh, so, so we, we need to drive four hours at that time. And now it's uh, two hours, but it's still very far from Tokyo. Uh, but people uh, so, 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 uh, want to use local wood for their buildings and bridge. And our idea is to work with small factory, local factory, because this glue lamb, the 30 centimeters height, was produced by the local factory. And then by using small unit, we try to create the big bridge. And then the smallness of each unit 
they give the intimacy to the, the building. And for the same village, we inspired by small tea house, the, we applied the same material, thatch, for the small hotel of the village. And uh, it is also very challenging because thatch used to, uh, the, as the, you to uh, the put on the, the roof, but on the facade is maybe first time in Japan. <laughs> But luckily, we found the very good the carpenters the, in the village. He, he's more than 70 years, and uh, he, 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 uh, uh, he joined this project because thatch is a disappearing the, uh, the technique in Japan, te disappearing material in Japan, and to find good craftsmen is, is almost impossible. So in the whole country, the three or four of the, the, uh, the, the company the, can the, work with thatch. And, uh, and I'm very worried I'm worrying about the, the, this technique disappear the, the soon. And I, the, with unique client, Starbucks, so we so were asked to design the, the new type of Starbucks in the special place. The Dazaif Tenmangu is, a, is a oldest, one of the oldest shrine in Japan. And in front of that the shrine, so they asked us to design the, the special of Starbucks. And our proposal is as a to work with a special carpenters and uh, and special structure system. This is not interior design. So we built uh, the, this building from scratch, and uh, and the, and also structurally, this is very unique. Uh, and the the the, the former uh, example, the ZC building, is as a a uh, perpendicular 90 degree system, but it's a diagonal system, and the joinery is very complex. And the normal Starbucks, the, the construction schedule is three, four months, but this building almost two years, and <laughs> they, are, they are very upset to, the, to hear the schedule. But as a, after completion, the, this Starbucks became as a, uh, the, the most Instagrammable Starbucks in Japan. And, 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 and. and uh, in the center of Tokyo, is, uh, Asakusa, Asakusa, is, 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 Asakusa has a long, long history. And in Edo era, the 17th, 18th century, Asakusa was a the, uh, the most uh, the active uh, the street in the town. And uh, in front of major temple of uh, the Asakusa, we designed this uh, the culture tourist center. The section is like that. Because uh, the, uh, the requirement from the city is 40 meters high building, but as uh, we thought, the 40 meters big tower is not fitting the landscape, fitting the, uh, the image of the place. And uh, so our idea is uh, stacking seven wooden buildings to create this intimate scale in, in, the, uh, in front of the temple. And the rendering, and there's a, real, there's a final uh, the building. And it's a small theater uh, on fourth floor. And the cafe, so from cafe we can look down the, the temple. The, as a, I think is, it can be the new solution for the, the higher building in the big city. And the China, so, so we designed this so museum in Hangzhou. 
The location is on the hill. And then again, we didn't want to cut the topography. The following, the landscape is very important for us. And also the create intimate scale is important for this project. This is the result. And the small, it looks like a small village. And, uh, and also we did use the local roof tile, ceramic roof tile. So because the local ceramic tile was handmade and beautiful. In Japan, so we also did do use the ceramic tile, but it's a big factory is producing the ceramic tile. It's, it's, a, it's, it's the same color, the same dimension, the same textures, but in China, the colors are so diverse, and I like the beauty of this roughness of the material. And we applied <coughs> this screen, this material for the screen to create the, the shadow for the, for the space. And uh, the, because of the, 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 the topography of the place, the floors is not flat. It is following the topography as a, uh, as a, as a same idea uh, as uh, the Guggenheim Museum in New York. But Guggenheim Museum, the lamp is an artificial lamp. But as a, this case, the, it is following the topography. And in France, so we also the, 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 uh, try the same method. The create the void uh, sometimes is very helpful to connect the nature and town. So this, this hole is working like that, same as Hiroshige Museum. And also we preserve the old building and we add the building on the existing building. The, the, this is, is we call it Engawa space. Engawa space is an is a in-between space between exterior and interior. In Japanese buildings, the Engawa is most important space. If you visit Katsura Villa in Kyoto, the Engawa is, a, is, a, is creating the harmony between landscape and the interior. And the same idea was applied in the French building. And also we did the landscape design as well for this building. The void is a, which create the connection of the town and the nature like that. And uh, our recent project in France is this station. It's a Saint Denis Players Station, and it's close to uh, the Saint Denis, uh, the Soccer Stadium. The, the district of Saint Denis is not the best location. Uh, the district in Paris is a, is a, the, and uh, the, the, some terrorists is, uh, are living in that uh, the Saint Denis area. And in my first visit, as a client asked me, don't walk on the street because it's very dangerous. And no good public space. And then our proposal for the station is to have the public space on the rooftop. And also to have the green on the rooftop and the wood for interior. And uh, at the beginning, his client is a French railway, com railway company, it's a national railway company. They didn't agree to use wood for the station. A, but finally, so we found the, the special technique uh, to create inflammable wood and also anti-graffiti treatment. And then finally, we get approval from them. And uh, in states, 
the Portland Japanese Garden is my first public project. First private project is a Polish house in Connecticut. The, and the uh, first private and public project is this building. And, uh, and again, the how to create intimacy, how to create harmony is most important. And uh, this type of planning, as we call it, the goose flying planning. The goose is uh, flying like that. And uh, the, the advantage is, uh, of this method is to create the open corners uh, the, which is connect as our exterior and interior. We have many corners and some corners uh, is totally openable like that. And uh, in Dallas, so we completed this Dallas Rolex building towers. And, uh, and also, so we as a, as a created the, the intimate material and the intimate scale. And uh, for the, the podium of the building, we worked with the Japanese craftsmen. As, uh, their name is Anoshu. The Anoshu, the, the history of Anoshu is, is very, very long. Uh, the 16th century, when uh, the Oda Nobunaga, the famous, the, 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 the famous warrior, the, the, he tried to build the biggest castle in Japan, Azuchi Castle. The, and uh, he asked uh, the, the craftsman group, Anoshu, to build a new type of a strong castle. And uh, that group, that family, the, are still working for creating castle. And, uh, and recently, and, uh, they said, uh, the, no one wants to build castle, <laughs> but uh, they are working so with the renovation. But for this project, we asked them to create a new castle in Dallas. And uh, uh, I want to show the, as a, today I don't have the, as a good image for the, the podium, but the, the, their technique is very beautiful. It is amazing. And in UK, there is a recent project in UK. It's a, a Victoria Albert Museum in Dundee, in Scotland. The inspiration came from the sea cliff. It is just up north of Scotland. And uh, because the location of the museum is the facing river. And uh, we thought the normal concrete box uh, will not fit the, this kind of location. And instead of a concrete box, we try to create a kind of sea cliff uh, which can, uh, 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 which can create uh, some harmony with environment. This is a detail of the wall, and how to create randomness is all, always very important for us. The, uh, the, and also, the, how to create void, so which connects uh, city and river, is very important for this project. We try to invite people, we try to bring people to waterfront. So before this building was built, the fac big factory, uh, factories were occupied as uh, this the waterfront area. And the city of Dundee and, uh, the, uh, and Scotland uh, the, uh, want to the, the, uh, create a new park as a facing river. 
And my idea is also to, to connect river and city again. And in, for the interior of the museum, we try to use local, local wood as possible as can by the unique detail. And uh, so our ideas for the, the, this public space is to create living space for the city. The Sun Museum as a, was used, most of the museum was, is just for the space for arts. But as a, we thought, the people, the community want to have living room as a facing beautiful river. And uh, our idea uh, they like very much. And uh, in the catalog of the museum, in the tote bag in the museum, they put the, the concept of the museum, a living room for the city. And the local wood so with uh, the rough configurations. And uh, it's a very new project. It was completed with, uh, last, uh, two months ago. It's a darling exchange in Sydney, Australia. The image is, as I took this photo by myself, and I'm sorry, the image is not so good, but as a, I really like the textures of that building. We did use New Zealand radiator pine for the facade. And the Sydney, city of Sydney want to have the, the some community space. The ground floor is a, as a kind of as a, uh, as a, as a market, as a, uh, the uh, movable boxes are in the market, and second floor library, and the third is a kinder, kindergarten, and the fourth is a restaurants, is a, and, the, uh, and people as a community are really enjoying this soft building. And uh, another recent project was, uh, was in Turkey, at the Odem Pazari Museum. It's not in Istanbul. It is a, uh, the, the city, its name is Eskishehir, and the location is, is named Odem Pazari. And Odem means wood, and Pazari means a bazaar. And wooden used to be the the place for wooden, wooden market, and, uh, and the neighbors of the building, uh, wooden buildings in Osman era, and we tried to uh, match those two three stories building, and uh, and construction method, uh, so we got a hint from. The Shosoin Temple. The Shosoin Temple is very old temple from Nara, and uh, the Shosoin Temple, the, the treasure of Shosoin Temple came from the uh, as a west, and uh, as a, at that time, of, as a sixth, seventh century, as a many as a many things came from the as a west. The silk came through the Silk Road, and then so we tried to symbolize the connection with Turkey by using the same the method of Shoso in temple. And as, uh, as, uh, besides those big projects, we are really enjoying the small experimental project. It's just, uh, we are invited by uh, MoMA New York and uh, to create a small pavilion so was hinted by small polytanks. So th the name of the exhibition is the home delivery, and uh, we designed this small polytank. The polytank was used for experimental house. And uh, the idea of this polytank house is to use the water as a for the material of the building. And uh, so in MoMA, so we uh, couldn't find the space to build the, the real house, 
And, but after coming back from Noma, MoMA, we built this experimental house. The, the heated waters is used for heating and cooking, and uh, without uh, the, the infrastructure, we can li live the only uh, by that house. The student, the, again, they, complete, con they constructed the house, the connecting the by pipes, and the water is flowing in the house. Uh, the, uh, the only one unit is enough to create the house. The bus stop and the bed and the sink and every element so was made by one single unit. And uh, the, this small project, Casamblera project, uh, was for Milano Triennale. And uh, the small umbrella was uh, used to build the house. The, our idea is simple. The, if the, the, the people carrying umbrella can work together, they built the small pavilion. The, the, basic, the, the initial ideas is, is came from Buckminster Fuller. As Buckminster Fuller, the, he designed the Fuller Dome but his idea is very democratic, but still the umbrella is much easier than his flat dome. And the 15 student decided to build a house together, and the five hours after they built that. And structurally, so we also got the hint from Buckminster Fuller. And uh, the Fuller's idea is tensegrity, tension of the membrane and the compression of the steel flame uh, that can work together to minimize the, the material. And, uh, and Sadao San was also working for Buckminster Fuller. Yeah. And uh, the student enjoy the construction process and uh, 15 students uh, drink together after completion and stay the night in the pavilion. And our idea, if disaster happens, so we should carry the umbrella. And, uh, and we, can carry, we can build by ourselves. And the self-made house is a basic idea of Buckminster Fuller. And uh, the Jubako is a wooden trailer house we designed. The normal trailer is metal, but so we did use wood to create the warmness and uh, merging to the environment. And the people supplied to see in the city, in the Tokyo. <laughs> and uh, also we uh, did use for the small restaurant. And the last project today is a small wood block. Uh, that we worked with my old friend Ryuichi Sakamoto. So he is the leader of NPO, Moa Trees. And his idea is to uh, activate the Japanese forest tree and uh, he asked me to design the new type of wood block. And the normal wood block is very similar to masonry structure system, the brick and the, the, the stone. But uh, its idea, that idea of this wood block is very similar to Japanese wooden building. The Japanese wooden building, the wood, wood is not stacking. So weaving is the basic method. And uh, we applied the system to Tumiki. Uh, and also the Frank Lloyd Wright, he loves Tumiki very much. And also he, he mentioned about the beauty of triangular Tumiki. 
and uh, I, I got hint fr from triangular tsumiki to create this transparent tsumiki. Thank you very much. <laughs> the Hiroshigi building, what was the roof made of? Yes, as a Hiroshige as a building, as a, we have the double roof system. The first layer is waterproofing roof by metal, and on the metal roof, as a, we we have the louvers, wooden louvers, and as a, as a, visually it works, and also it as a as a is for saving energy. And in Japan, so we have the similar system of lead platinum. And so we, we got lead platinum, the Japanese lead platinum, by that method. Reed platinum? Reed platinum. And my second question is, <laughs> what was the building in China used for? What was the purpose uh, so of the building? It's a museum? It's a, it's a roof tile building? No, Which the one that was like a... Um, kind of looked like castle-like. Oh, is that Hangzhou? Excuse me. Uh, is a Hangzhou, Hangzhou building. Yeah. Yes, Hangzhou building is a museum for art university. And art university, and the, and the contents of the museum is uh, the, the crafts. And the interesting story is that the curator of the museum, he studied in Japan, and he learned Minge. You know Minge? The Minge is the Japanese craftsmanship. And uh, in Meiji era, some Japanese artists and uh, the writer worked together to activate Japanese craftsmanship. The movement was called Minge. And that Chinese creator studied in Japan, and he wanted he want to bring the Japanese Minge to China. And in China, to find the cross is not so difficult. And the collection, collection of Chinese Minges are amazing. Oh, yes. In the front, Michael. Too bad. I don't know whether you can just stand without the microphone. Yes. Okay, yeah, here. Um, the very admirable, these wooden facades and wooden elements, how do you make sure that they are not being polluted in, 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 in a... In a city environment, how, how would you make sure that this uh, wonderful wooden appeal stays as it is and that the wood doesn't get gray and, um, you know, uh, influenced by the elements? Yes, as a, as a, uh, the recently so we have the, uh, as a very as a, uh, advanced treatment method, but, but still the by the pollution is getting grayer. And, uh, and as in case of national stadium, and uh, so, so we add the white pigment as a, as, as a from the beginning, and uh, as a little bit as a, as a whitish, grayish, as a, from the beginning of the project. And uh, if there's some part is, uh, is getting grayer, as a, totally, it looks very natural, and then we add white pigment from the beginning of the project. <laughs> On the competition for the Olympic Stadium, uh, after all that had happened, that the Japanese public had, was, did such an outcry for the project, were architects participated giving specific uh, guidelines regarding materials, size, uh, structure, or were they left at their own uh, creativity? Guidance? Yeah, as a, as a, as a story of this, as a competition, it was, it was very complicated. As a, as a first winner, as, as you know, the Hadid won the first competition. And, uh, and as a, as a, because of the budget, as a, it, uh, estimation was triple, uh, triple as of initial budget. And, and, uh, and also the, some, arch, some Japanese architect, as a, uh, Professor Maki, as a, as a, he, 
he as, as uh, started the uh, pro protest as, uh, as, uh, uh, the, uh, against the building, and uh, finally the Japanese government decided to cancel that. And then the second competition, uh, the, the cost was, was a very critical issue for the project. And then as a, the, as a, as a requirement of the competition is design-build competition. And uh, as a, we should submit as a, with a construction company. In, in that case, we worked with Taisei Corporation. And Taisei Corporation invited me to work together. And the precise cost and the precise ex as a estimation and the design. And, uh, the, uh, and the requirement is a kind of Japanese taste is, is needed. And, uh, and, uh, and then our, our answer is to use wood. To, to use, for sustainability, to use wood is very helpful. And, uh, and also to use local wood is very good for Japanese forestry. And and uh, and uh, Japaneseness is not easy theme for us. But, uh, some people think it is Japanese building, <laughs> but it's, it's not typical Japanese style. Style-wise, is very neutral, I think. But material-wise, as uh, we got hint from Japanese old buildings. And. Uh, and that's the story about that. Maybe I can follow up on that question. We have a couple questions uh, that we wanted to ask you, Kumasan. So um, about cultural exchange, you know, one of the uh, one of the outcomes that ACC always notices with our grantees is that uh, cultural exchange enables you to travel to a country and learn about the other. Um, but actually, what also happens many times, an outcome is you actually learn a lot about yourself and where you come from and your, the sort of background that you have. Um, looking back on your ACC grant experience and coming to the United States and learning about American culture and American architects and then returning to Japan, did you discover, can you share with us any part of you that was sort of Japanese or any element of you that you felt, oh, this is my Japanese-ness coming out? Yeah, so, mm. The 90, uh, I, I was here, 1985 to 1986, and uh, I was attending Columbia, I was visiting Scala, and I was, uh, luckily, as, uh, I got to know Kenneth Frampton. As, uh, Kenneth Frampton was very much interested in uh, the tectonics of, of architecture, so he's, he was interested in how to make architecture. As, uh, his, and at that, 1985, 86, this is a, a kind of postmodernism era, and the postmodernism skyscrapers uh, are in, as a building in the city. But Kenneth's as, as, as idea is a little bit different, and I, I was very inspired by his idea. Yeah, but uh, mm, after as, as coming back to Japan, I didn't use wood for the building, because that time, the still, the most of the client didn't want to use wood for the building. The, the, the people thought wood is a material only for small house. And, uh, and, uh, but the, luckily, 1990s, the, the totally, the, the, the boom stopped, and uh, the, I travel a lot to countryside, and uh, I learn the method of food slowly. But in New York, mm, I, I, I have good friends, I have good teachers, but uh, I still remember I uh, bought two tatami mat, you know tatami mat, <laughs> in the apartments in New York, because <laughs> the, I want to, the, show tea ceremony to my American friends. And, uh, and I myself, <laughs> as, a, as a land tea ceremony at that time, but tea ceremony is a very 
complicated <laughs> and uh, and uh, I ran tea ceremony and uh, I served tea to my American friends and uh, and if as a, as a, I was I, I didn't come to New York I couldn't learn tea ceremony uh, <laughs> and the New, uh, New York gave me the chance to learn tea ceremony <laughs> but a tea ceremony is a, uh, to have tea ceremony together with the American friends is is very interesting experience because I should teach them the meaning of that the method why we should use this bowl like that and why we should use napkin for that and then to explain the ceremony as a, as a, is a kind of learning system for myself. And then in New York, I learned Japanese culture. It's <laughs> <laughs> a fantastic answer. Thank you. Um, while you were in New York, you once said that uh, in a class at Columbia, your professor had mentioned, or had quoted actually, Abraham Lincoln and said, I like to see a man proud of the place in which he lives. I like to see a man live so that his place will be proud of him. And you had mentioned before that this was a very sort of influential statement for you. And um, can you talk about, uh, you're very humble, but can you talk about a project or, or an experience that you're particularly proud of? Um, there's so many to choose from, but. Uh, yeah, so the uh, prior, uh, yeah, as a, one of my professor in as a Columbia University, as a Robert Stan, he is still my friends, and uh, as a, at that time he was on the the TV as a series as a as a played played the place as a, and the studying from as Abraham Lincoln's world, I I love that as a sentence very much, and in the in Japan as. A, as a Yusuhara village, Yus I I showed the, the two of Yusuhara wooden bridge and uh, the thatch is a uh, house uh, that is, was in Yusuhara, and uh, I I I have been working with them. Um, the started 1991, and then the, we designed six buildings for them, and the, because. They love our design very much, and also I respect them very much. And they are very proud of their village. It is a, a very small village, and very far from the city. And uh, and uh, the nickname of the village is is the Tibet in Japan, <laughs> because it's a very it's it's in south, but it snows. It's from November. It snows. It's south, but then snows November is very unusual because of the special climate. But uh, they, they they are very proud because the one is a historic story is uh, Sakamoto Ryoma, you know, the, he is one of the key person of the Meiji Reformation. The, the Sakamoto Ryoma the stayed in Yusuhara village some, some days. Some days, and the Yusuhara people supported Sakamoto Ryoma because the, he, they were inspired, impressed by the philosophy of Sakamoto Ryoma, and that they're still very proud of supporting Sakamoto Ryoma. And, uh, and to work with that kind of people, so they are very proud of their cultures, and that they, are, so, so, that they are also very proud of their beautiful landscape. It's very exciting, mm. um, and I, I always often remember the word "pride place." That's lovely. Thank you. Um, the Asian Cultural Council gives grants to support cultural exchange between the United States and twenty-five other countries in Asia. Our geographic purview sort of stretches from Afghanistan through Japan down to Indonesia. If you were able to, I know your schedule is completely full, but if you were able to choose a country in which you might have a burning desire to do a project, is there any particular geography or country that you would like to do a project in that you haven't before or go back to and have another project? Yeah, as, a, as, a, I'm in, as, a, as always, 
as a new location, the new new place, as a as a gives gives me the stimulation, give me a new idea. And uh, if I was invited from the the new new site, a new new place, <coughs> as a and uh, I ignore business <laughs> because I'm very curious as a, to the, the, the place. As for example, the Turkish project, the Turkish project, as it's my first Turkish project, and also I was invited from the, the small city, not Istanbul. And it's, it's very as a, ex exciting for us <laughs> and also I, I learned the, the history of the place, and in Meiji era, the famous the professors of architecture, history, the Chutaito, the Chutaito visited the town. And uh, uh, yeah, I, and then I was so surprised. Why Japanese professor visited that small town in Meiji era? And, uh, and then so I, I really like to work with that kind of special history. Yeah. Okay. Why did he visit that? Because the, he did a big tour starting from China mm -hmm. to, to, as a, to as a, as a West. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he was very much interested in the history of Horyuji Temple. You know, Horyuji Temple. And his, as a, as a, his theory is Horyuji Temple came f idea came from Greece. Mm, <laughs> it, the, the shape of the, the, the column of Holy <laughs> Temple is entasis. You know, entasis is a, is a curvature. Of the, as a, it's very similar mm -hmm. to Greek, the temple. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, Chutaito thought maybe the, the Greece and Japan has some connection. And he, he, he planned to go to Greece to check the history of the, the, the temples. Fascinating. Cultural exchange all the way back then. <laughs> Do we have another question from the audience? Uh, oh. yes. Hi, thank you so much for this lecture. Um, I was wondering if you could talk about the relationship between sustainable design and local design, and particularly in contexts like the Turkey project where you are less familiar, how do you approach um, the local design that seems inherent in most of your projects? Yeah, the sustainability is always the most important theme for us. And, uh, and especially, I'm very much interested in the material. So in the 20th century, the people ignored the material totally because People thought the concrete and the steel are the, well, it's the only option for the building, and uh, and uh, and the construction company chose the cheapest material from anywhere. The, but the cheapest material means the as a as a, we need to transport the material from the place far the, 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 uh, too far. It's not sustainable at all, and uh, and then, so as a, before 19th century, as a, as a, as a, in Japan, people d did use the wood from the mountain behind, the no transportation, so the, and uh, it's just a reduce the the carbon oxidized, the carbon oxidized, the, and uh, and the, and uh, and also. So people did use the wood for a long time. It is also the, uh, the this is, helps a lot to avoid the global warming. But now the 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 Japanese wood is, 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 is are not popular in Japan because it's expensive. The Canadian wood, the Russian wood, is, is are cheaper than Japanese wood. And still, the people uh, using the wood from from away, and uh, and the sustainability ignoring sustainability totally. And then, so the from where, and from what the process is is very important for sustainability. Thank you so much. I think one last question we had. Um, 
I'm sorry, was there a question? I, I, I missed, oh, sorry, yes, go ahead. So this is also a question about sustainability. The decision to build a new stadium for the Olympics rather than reuse, refurbish, or expand the old Kenzo Tanga uh, stadium was somehow controversial. And given that he's somehow responsible for you becoming an architect and that he was so inspiring for you, of course, you jumped on the project when it was already too late to think about uh, reusing the old one, but do you have like any qualms or any second thoughts about whether it was the right decision to build a new one rather than the re reuse the old one? Uh, reuse the old one? Yeah, yeah Kenzo yeah. Tangas. Yeah, the, the, as a uh, as an old stadium as was built in 1958, mm -hmm. as a as the before the first Olympic. And then the structure is a as a as a as already as a con the old concrete structures has damaged a lot, mm. and then the, to reuse and the, to refurbish was was impossible for that period. Yeah, but as a as a but as a so I I loved that old building very much mm. because as a the, there was a sports gym. In the in the old stadium, I often <laughs> to use that sports gym, yeah. and that and the tennis club adjacent to stadium. I was a member of tennis club. I played a lot in that area, and uh, and uh, that guy and Foles, that Foles, mm -hmm. uh, is most one of the uh, the most important park in Tokyo, mm -hmm. and uh, I love area. And then I want to the uh, the uh, the keep the beauty of this environment. Thank you. I think we, I think we have a couple more questions. But timing-wise, I think we actually have come to the end of our program. But this being a, a, a dialogue or the East-West dialogues, um, we would love to invite you upstairs for a reception to continue a conversation with Kumasan and uh, also to talk about. Um, you know, I think ACC's purpose for the East-West Dialogue is to, to continue critical thinking and to continue connection. And so we hope that you can join us upstairs and uh, continue that dialogue and continue connecting with other fellow audience members. I want to thank Kamiya-san once again uh, for this wonderful opportunity and Kumasan, of course, for sharing so much with us. Thank you. Thank you very much.